What's up, everybody? How's it going? Um, I know two day, two videos in two days. Crazy, right? Um, today's kind of long overdue. Uh, what I plan to do is go through the truck and trailer and give you guys another tour of that. Uh, updated since we've had the additions added to the truck. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about the whole setup, so I'm just going to answer as many questions that have been asked and that could be asked in that video. Um, but I'm also going to talk about my personal truck. Um, so some of you guys might have seen it. I did like one real quick video about it. Uh, I think I was taking it to like a truck to a wash or something. Um, this is my 2015 Ram 2500. Uh, it does have the 6.7 Cummins in it. Um, it's the crew cab long bed version. I wanted the long bed because, uh, well, short beds are kind of useless once you once you put like a toolbox in it. Um, I do have a toolbox for it. It's actually actually at the house. I had to take it off because I just had a bed liner sprayed in this. Uh, it didn't come with one, but uh, this is a bullet liner. Um, only took a day for that to get installed. Dropped it off in the morning, picked it up in the afternoon. Um, pretty nice bed liner. I like it. Um, they did a good job spraying it, so I mean, you really can't screw something like that up. Um, this is a uh, um, what is that? SLT. So it's got the cloth interior. It's not clean. This wasn't a planned video. Um, it's got the cloth interior, but it does, um, one of the things I wanted was a bench seat. I was really adamant about wanting a bench seat. Um, so I got the bench seat. This center console will flip up. Um, there's going to be a bunch of stuff going here to include a laptop mount and, uh, lighting controllers and radios and stuff. Cause this will get set up for, uh, being used as a pilot car so that if, um, if we ever decide to do so, we get a big project or something, we can use this. One of us will drive it, one of us will drive the big truck, and we could uh, you know, do it that way and not have to always hire a pilot car to come in and do it. Um, that's that. Of course, I've got stickers. I don't know. Why not? Um, yeah, I mean, it's got you know backup camera navigation, or not navigation, uh, Sirius XM. Uh, Bluetooth, all, all that good stuff. I just didn't, I'm not a big fan of, uh, I'm not necessarily the most amenities driven person in the world. So I didn't need the leather wrap dash and the air conditioned seats, though air conditioned seats are amazing. It's, it's like freedom being blown right up your butthole and it's wonderful, but I didn't need that. Um, it's got the full back seat, nothing special back there. Um, yeah not sure what else to show you guys show you about this one um it is four wheel drive i think that's it <laughs> anyways we'll move on to the truck so um like i said earlier this was kind of an unplanned video um i was driving to the store to pick something up happened to have the gopro in the truck and i was like you know what let's go ahead and knock this out so um We'll start with the truck, then we'll move to the trailer because they're separate right now. Because when the yard we park in, uh, it might look bigger on the GoPro because of the way the fish angle is. But the distance between the front of our trailer and that truck's not very much. So if, if our tractor, which is like 30 something feet long, would be sitting right about here, uh, people wouldn't be able to get in and out. So we always separate the two. Um, anyways, we'll start with the truck. So from front to rear, Let's talk about the uh, the one thing that's pretty abnormal about the front of our truck is this thin blue line sign. So what this is, um, this is actually our oversized load sign that will flip around. Um, basically what we did to mount this was these are our um, main bumper mounting bolts that mount the chrome bumper to our frame. So what we did is we took them out, flipped them over, ran them in from the back to forward. Um, bolted them i'm not sure if you can see it but they're bolted back the way they're supposed to be torqued to spec and everything and then uh, this is the remainder of that bolt and then we just put a couple washers and some wing nuts on there so uh when it's time to flip this over we pull off all those just flip the sign and uh 
we have our oversized load banner. So what this thin blue line is, um, I know I have viewers that are not all American. Um, even though this actually originated in the United Kingdom. So if you guys are in you know, the UK, you've probably seen this. Um, and if you guys have been paying attention to the news or anything, you guys have for sure have seen this lately. Uh, like I said, it's called the Thin Blue Line. Basically what it is, is it's a, uh, a law enforcement support. Um, it, it, was, it was really originally designed for lawns, law, law enforcement officers to support their fallen comrades. Um, and it has since been adapted into basically, I guess, a support of law enforcement. So there is actually a meaning behind it. Um, in the original design, the top black bar is to resemble the public. Um, and the bottom black bar is to, is to resemble basically the evil in society. And the thin blue line is the line of police officers that stand between your public and the, uh, the evil. Um, you know, there's some other adaptations as to what it means. Um, I've heard some things of this, you know, along the lines of anytime an officer falls, there's a break in the line and somebody else has to stand up and take their place to fill that void. So, um, there's a lot of meaning behind this. I have a lot of friends and a lot of family, or I have a lot of friends and family that are in law enforcement and... I just want to show my support for them because they have a incredibly difficult job that they do every single day and uh, unfortunately most people meet them on what for most people is the worst day of their lives um, under the worst circumstances so they're not always in, in the right spirits when they meet cops but they you know they really are out there to, to protect and to help people and I genuinely think that 99% of cops have good intentions. Um, so anyways, that takes care of that. The motor, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna open the hood up. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, one of the rubber things that this actually sits on, there's like a rubber spacer here that, that sits on, uh, it gets caught on the other side. So it's really a pain. It is a Cummins ISX 15. Um, it's I guess it's what they call their 490 horsepower motor. They've got two motors that they produce in this model. Um, there was the what they called their 490 and their 500 motor. Um, the 490, the actual power output's about 460 um, horsepower, and I don't even know what the torque is, man. To be honest with you. Oh shit! What the hell is that? Bug guts. We're good. Um, Let's see, I'm going to go through every little thing that I possibly can. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on our oversized lights because that's going to be something. So, working back, um, oh, wheels. They are 22 by 5, um, 22, point, 22 by 5 by, uh, I think these are 9.5 with um, 315, 80, 22.5. Bridgestone tires. So this is not a 20,000 pound steer axle. This is not a big heavy pusher or big heavy axle. Uh, the, the axle rating, the axle is a 13,200 pound axle. I did these wheels and tires to complete the look of the heavy haul truck. Talk shit if you want, whatever. Um, air cleaners, we've got a light in each air cleaner that we hit in here. Um, the wiring comes back through that black piece of loom right there and then it goes into the hood and runs up into our lighting controller so that is one there there's obviously one in that cleaner as well and they're kind of synced up to uh flash opposite each other i hope you guys can see that um okay so that covers that this thing it's just a shoe scrubber Someone's gonna ask about it. Bug guts. All right, um, everything else basically is on here is the way your, your normal Kimworth would come. Uh, this headache rack was custom built by, uh, by Ravens up in uh, Dover, Ohio. We had them, they're the ones that built the 
our, our the four axle. Um, so they actually built this, this cabinet for us. So I'm gonna attempt to do this one-handed. Now, like I said, this is a, uh... oh, of course I get it backwards. This is an unplanned video, so how you guys see this stuff, it's not been staged. So this is how we keep all of our stuff when, uh... so basically this is the, I'll show you this one. And uh, we've got these big steel racks that hang all our binders. Um, this little bungee cord here is just to keep them from hopping out. Inside these chain pockets that, or these chain slots, whatever you want to call them, that we had built, um, we carry all of our different size chains. This is a 10 foot, a 10 foot, a 20 foot, a 20 foot, 10 foot, 10 foot. All these down here are six foots with different types of hooks on them. Uh, we ran out of room, so we got one additional binder. This this thing is, um, there's certain stuff you haul, you have to like protect it from the straps. And that's like, I don't even know what it is. I think it's insulation for like piping or some shit. And you basically you just cut that to size and you slide the strap through it and it, and it works as like a, a little insulator. Um, so that's that one. That cabinet is set up identically. Um, Get my key out here. I guess I probably should have opened these boxes first. But that's all right, we'll make it work. God dang it. Over two. There's bungee cords in there. Okay, anyways, so on the last, uh, that center box has like bungee cords and uh, two lawn chairs and just, that's about it really. There's spare hooks in there for our chains, spare clevis pins, uh, cotter pins, there's just a couple spare parts in there. Um, oversized loads, lights up top. They are Wellen, or not Wellen, I'm sorry, Hella Mini Light Bar 2000s? It's either 200 or 2000 can't remember the big light bar across the center is a auto feel 52 inch uh, spot flood combo that is what we use if we have to work on anything at night um, air and electrical lines somebody has mentioned this before uh, yes it is against DOT regulation for your air and electrical lines to be touching the catwalk however the ones here that are designed with these plastic like uh, spiral thing going around it this plastic spiral prevents the actual air and electrical lines from making contact with the catwalk. So that makes it legal. That is why they were designed that way. Um, that's that. So from the last video I did of this, we did not have the third axle. So drive axle, drive axle, factory. They stayed where they were. Um, Valley Truck in Grand Rapids, Michigan took a axe to the tail of our truck cut it off added frame added frame inside that way and added this axle now this is a dead axle so it does not lift it is on the ground 24 7 its sole purpose is to support weight now why did we do that um two reasons one thing you get most is Why didn't I put it up front? So if I were to put it up front, let's look at this. So this is where our kingpin sits right now on our trailer, right? So the nose of the trailer ends right about here because you center it up over your center axle. So if I had moved that axle and turned it into a lift axle up here, then this would have been our center axle, which means the fifth wheel plate would have been riding here, the front of our trailer riding here, which would have left us virtually no room to overhang things. We wanted the ability to haul longer pieces to set up for like bunk and dolly moves like we did with that bridge beam. So that is really one of the main reasons that we went off the back instead of adding a lift axle here. Very easily could have, there was plenty of room, could have just ripped that step off, thrown a lift axle on there, called it a day. Um, but we thought it out. Now, why we did a dead axle versus a tri-drive, 
Um, at the time, I didn't really see a benefit to a tri drive. Now, if you guys saw that last video yeah, I put up yesterday, Lenny said something about Canada not recognizing a lift axle. That is correct. On a tractor, Canada does not recognize lift axles. But what they do recognize is a tri drive. Now, this, according to the Canadian Transportation Authority, this is basically what they would consider a tri drive because it does not lift, it does not adjust, nothing. It is just on the ground supporting weight. The only difference is I can't lock it in and actually use it to crawl out of a hole. So they view that the same as a tri drive. So yes, I can still run Canada with that setup. Another reason why we decided to go that way out. Um, boy, what else are you guys gonna ask? Oh, the transmission. The transmission is a uh, Eaton, Eaton Fuller 13 speed. We have a, uh, heavy duty clutch was like a 2080 foot or I don't know I think it was like 20 2080 foot pound torque rated clutch um, that is hooked to 370s is what is the gears that we're running in the truck um, so let me make that very clear if you guys are starting to get into heavy haul or you want to get into heavy haul you don't need this massive truck double frame nose to tail that's got i mean 18 speed with a four speed auxiliary transmission and 795 rear end so that you could yank the empire state building off its foundation you don't need that crap to to get into heavy haul you know we'll do up to 110,000 pounds on the deck of the trailer with a factory road truck with an with you know uh, a certified added axle and a 13 speed and 370 rear end so you don't need all this crazy stuff that people think you need as far as what will do the work now you have to take care of your equipment you know this kind of stuff will beat the crap out of this but you don't need the world's most expensive heavy haul truck all right so on to the trailer um, Oh, the truck's a 2013, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Wheelbase, shit. Uh, 307 inches is our wheelbase. Um, for those of you that don't know, wheelbase on a tri-drive is measured from the center of your steer axle to the center of your drive axle, which would be that, this, our center axle. So from there to there, 307 inches. Um, okay. On to the trailer, 2015 Ravens Magnum. Uh, really, I believe it's called their uh, Super Magnum is what they've dubbed it. Uh, it is custom built. Joe Donovan, my mentor and the guy that actually owns this and had it built, uh, had it custom built by them. They weren't thrilled about the idea of building it initially, but the engineer said it would play. And it does, let me tell you, this thing is a freaking beast. You guys follow the channel, you see what we do, it's a monster. Um, custom made frame rails, The it's a 53 foot trailer, obviously four axles. Um, it is rated at 135,000 pound GVWR. So, what, 60, what is that, 67 tons, 65? 67 and a half tons, 67 tons, something like that. Um, I'm not gonna go through actually opening all the toolboxes because I, I mean, if you guys have seen round straps before, you've seen them, but I will tell you what's in every toolbox. So, what, what side are we on? Um, this toolbox has two tarps in it. This toolbox has all of our, oh, this toolbox has our ladder and our chainsaw and a little gas can so if we ever need to get fuel for the chainsaw we can have someone run up to the corner and get it there's a lot of times we'll have to cut up some hardwood to put on a piece and uh, some of the places there don't have that kind of equipment so we always carry a chainsaw in case we need to um, and then our tire chains for the truck and trailer or for the truck that's all that's in this box this box is split in two uh, lengthwise so on the bottom houses all of our rubber um, I've mentioned it before, we use rubber under every load to prevent it from shifting on the aluminum deck. Um, we have tons of rubber in there, probably a thousand pounds of rubber, I'd say. 
Um, and the top half is all of our oversized load stuff, all of our flags that we have to put on the side of loads, flags that go on the front and back of our trailer, our trailer signs, additional oversized lights, um, cables to run airlines back to the trailer if we separate it. Um, this side has all our winches. I believe there's 15 winches on this side. And then on the other side, there are these hook things that I'll show you, but there's only 13 of them. So I don't know what happened there, but uh, these. So our four inch straps will come over and hook into down here and it keeps them from sliding. You can lock them in. So, all right, uh, front box here, what the hell, uh, padding. This is all blankets and felt pads and everything to protect a load before we tarp it or to protect our tarps from the sharp corners of a load. Um, this one is all of our straps, all of our four inch straps, all of our two inch straps. We have some 50 foot straps, 40 foot, 30 foot straps, uh, two inch ratchet straps. Um, all of our steel and plastic edge protectors are in here. All of our tennis balls. You guys have seen tennis balls before and have asked me what they were for. Tennis balls are like the greatest way to protect yourself from bolts. Cut a little X in the bottom of them. If there's a bolt on the top of the piece, pop that sucker on, tarp lays right over it, good to go. Uh, back box on this side holds another two tarps. Um, so let's see, I believe that's about all that, um, boy, that's a mess right there. Uh, the back of the trailer, well, you guys have seen the back of the trailer. Two oversized lights, whatever. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. I think that's about it. Uh, these are joust, uh, I think they're called like, I, I forget the model name, but it's the highest model that they make, um, that they made for this year, the, the strongest model. Uh, these things, <laughs> these are rated for like 200,000 pounds of downward pressure. So let's run this right quick because a lot of people ask about like when we drop the trailer, if it's going to collapse. No, no. First of all, on our truck, our drives weigh like 16 or 16,000 pounds empty. The most we can permit back there, generally speaking, is about 60,000 pounds. So that's 46,000 pounds that you can add to that, which that weight would be coming down here, right? So if I can only add 46,000 pounds there, I have to carry the rest of the weight on the trailer wheels. Well, that means when I take the tractor away, Generally speaking, the most you're going to be looking at right here is 50, 60,000 pounds, maybe. If you're loaded super, super front heavy, maybe 50, 60,000 pounds would end up on these landing gear. The trailer supports the rest of the weight. So uh, that's that. And let's go with the interior real quick since I think I still have a little bit of battery left. Um, So what do we have? Dash cam, GPS, easy pass to get us through scales, pre-pass to get us through way stations, best pass to get us through like Oklahoma, uh, Texas, Kansas, different places that don't take easy pass, tolls, tolls, scales. Uh, this is our lighting controller. This switch controls all the lights. So this is our overhead lights this is our adds in our cleaner lights and soon that will add in a light on the front grill this activates our big floodlight on the back of the trailer or on the back of the truck cobra 29 ltd classic um, cb radio it's been peaked and tuned um, road king rk56 american flag mic because freedom uh here's our like Bluetooth headset, it's a blue parrot something. Of course, we got a lighter leash because we smoke. I know, bad habit. Um, we carry this up here, it's a temperature gauge, something that we like to carry when we're hauling heavy. Uh, we'll turn it on, and if we, we come down a big grade or something and we stop, uh, you know, we'll shoot the uh, the brakes or the diffs or something on a big climb just to make sure everything's good. Um, nothing really important in the glove box. Um, yes, the shifter is shorter than a long time ago. Uh, apparently, Pops didn't like it. Came home one 
I came back to the truck one week and it was shorter. It used to be up like here and it was gangster. But this actually works. I've gotten used to it and it's actually a pretty nice height. Um, that's that. And then in the back, there's not much special back here because we, we've taken all of our stuff out for the majority. Um, up here, we've got I've got like a spare pair of hard hard um, steel toe boots. We've got our winter jackets and our big jumpsuits. Uh, some more jackets. Up here, we have hard hats and rain gear. Um, in here is all my camera equipment for for you guys. In here, this little bucket's where we keep our ties. We've got some you know random things in here: uh, Purell, butt powder, lighter fluid, smell good shit, uh, extra like power cables and stuff for all of our stuff. And here's where all our shirts hang. And here is where our printer is and all of our like permit permit information and stuff. Uh, this is all of our, our filing bin. There's our pr printer that we use. It's Wi-Fi so we can just print it from our phones. Uh, our little back organizer normally when we're driving all of our permits and stuff go either right here or up on the front seat depending on how much we have. Um, oh crap, I forgot to take this. Pull that out. We got our power inverter down here and our vacuum cleaner. Uh, this is where all our bags go under the seat here. That's where all our bags normally go. Hope there wasn't anything funky down there when I just showed you that. Um, that's about it for the interior, guys. I mean, being as that's it for the interior, I suppose that will do it for the truck. Um, we're actually going to be adding a second radio to this um, probably this week. It'll be hanging beneath this, and it'll be actually a UHF VHF radio so that we can talk on private channels. We have a bunch of handhelds. We have a handheld CB down here that we'll give to state police uh, when we have an escort. Um, but the UHF VHF will be nice because we'll be able to talk at a further distance to our pilot cars than, than you can with just a standard CB. So... Uh, one thing everybody seems to forget is they'll put these huge powerful CBs in there. They'll be illegal as crap running, you know, 100 watts to a CB. And that's great because everybody in the world can hear you, but you're only going to be able to hear. You can only hear as strong as the person talking's radio is. So somebody 20 miles away might hear you on your super powerful CB radio, and that's cool, I guess. But you aren't going to be able to hear them, so it's kind of pointless. So we're going to use VHF, UHF. We have, like, two of them at the house. We have two handhelds as well. Um, all that will get thrown in the truck. And, yeah. And I just realized I forgot about the side boxes. Side boxes. This side houses all of our truck maintenance stuff as far as it's got all of our extra fluids. Um, winch wiper fluid, coolant, extra oil, uh, WD-40, silicone grease, anything we can need to lube the truck. This is also where I keep like all the tire shine and truck cleaning stuff. There's like a little pull-out drawer in here with extra towels and gloves and stuff like that. Um, and our warning triangles are there with all of our spare fuses and shit that we need for DOT like that. And then the other box, on the other side houses, um, this houses all of our uh, oh shit stuff. So this has Dremel tool, air tools, um, God, uh, wrenches, ratchets, big tool bag full of stuff. Um, it also has, um, we also carry, uh, like a hundred foot extension cord. We carry 50 feet of airline that we can hook up to the tractor and run air tools off of. So anything on the truck breaks, we can fix it. Um, that should just about wrap it up. I am sure I forgot something. Uh, so if I did, please throw it in the comments below um, and I will try and answer it. If, uh, if I can. So hopefully that worked. Shit, that turned out to be longer than I expected. But, oh well. It was about due. So, um, got some big plans coming up for the truck this month. And that will be fun to show you guys. That'll be for this truck. Uh, this month it's going to be getting a 6 inch lift and new wheels and tires. Hopefully this month.
Peace. Just one more quick thing. Uh, for those of you guys that have made it this far in the video, I just wanted to take the chance to say thank you for all the support that you guys have given me in this channel. I never thought that it would make it as far as it has. Um, I think now we're about over 7,500 people. 7,500 people who have decided that for however long I'm going to talk that day, they want to hear what I have to say about what it is that I love to do. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I know I don't say it enough, um, but I just wanted to take this little bit of time here at the end of this video to say thank you and that I look forward to where this channel will go. And we'll see you on the 12th in Galveston, Texas.